Hey freediving family, today we're going to talk about masks and snorkels for freediving. If your mask fogs up on you, if your mask leaks, if your mask or your snorkel is uncomfortable, if you want to buy a mask or you just want to know more in general, then this video is for you. I'm going to start with masks and I'm going to start by saying there is no such thing as the best mask. I get asked that question all the time and I really mean that. There is no such thing. We all have weird faces. Some are weirder than others. <laughs> and all you need to do is find the right mask to fit your own weird face. The best way to test this out is to take a mask, place it on your face, just like this, then inhale and see how it feels. When you inhale, does it suck on your face completely? Is there a complete seal? This is the most important determiner for whether that mask, the shape of that mask, is good for your face. If there's a leak when you do this, then it will almost certainly leak when you're in the water. If the brow of the mask presses into your forehead, then the shape of it is not right for you. Or if you can't easily pinch your nose in the mask, then that would mean the nose area is too large for your nose. This is why you can't buy masks online you need to go into a dive shop and try on as many different masks as possible and just see which one fits you the best. And it's the same with wetsuits. Actually, uh, my next video is gonna be about wetsuits. So if you are interested to see that, or if you wanna see that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you are already subscribed to the channel, make sure you ring the little notification bell so that you'll know when the video is out. So you can see what I'm getting at here. I have a big nose, so I need a mask for big nosed people. You're gonna need a mask for your face, and this is why there is no such thing as the best mask. There is a such thing, though, as a good mask or good masks, and this usually comes down to the materials that are used in the masks, the quality of the materials. The glass that's used in masks is usually more or less the same. So what you're really looking for here is the silicon that has been used in the masks. Generally, the softer the silicon, the more comfortable the mask is going to be. Though a fun fact for anyone out there that's diving with a beard, if you do get a mask with really stiff silicon, it will leak less or even not at all because the hard silicon presses the hair down onto your skin and it actually makes a seal. These are some of the ones that I really like personally. Keeping in mind, these are just my preferences based on my face shape. This is the Cressy Nano Mask and this is a really good versatile and low volume mask that a lot of people like to use. This is the Salvamar Noah mask and I think personally it is the most comfortable mask I mean for me but also a lot of divers report that they feel like this mask is incredibly comfortable this is the Spora sub mask uh, I forgot its name uh, I'm just calling it the Spora sub mask but it looks pretty distinct so I'm sure you can look it up and find out what it's called <laughs> this mask is really great for people with small faces and the silicon is especially soft so people really really like it Although because it is built for, I suppose, smaller faces, it doesn't really fit everyone. Those are just some of my favorites. But please feel free to comment your favorite mask or the mask that you use down into the comments. Because it's really important that we get a general sense of what people are using, especially when people come to watch this video for information when they're going to buy their first mask. Sharing is caring and never forget that we are a freediving family. Also a quick point, for freediving, try to avoid masks with clear silicon. Often they're just cheap snorkeling masks or scuba diving masks. They let in too much light from the sides, they can warp your vision, they're not cool, nobody likes them. Never forget the reason why we free dive in the first place, to look cool. Enjoying the water comes in second. The other really important thing with your mask is the level of visibility it offers you. I mean, that one's probably pretty obvious. <laughs> Basically, the bigger that the lenses are and the closer they are to your face, the more visibility you're gonna have. Personally, I don't look for a mask with super wide lenses to give me visibility. What I prefer to do is choose a low volume mask, one in which the mask or the, the lenses themselves will be close to my face and I'll get the same, the same range of visibility that you'd get with one of these wide lens masks because the mask is closer to your face. The other reason why it's really good to have a mask with a small or a low air volume, by which I mean the volume of air that's in the mask when it's on your face. The reason why that's important is because as you descend, you have to continuously exhale air into your mask to stop it from sucking onto your face and popping your eyes out. <laughs> and the greater volume of air that's in the mask means the greater volume that you have to exhale into it. A low volume mask will typically have around 80 odd milliliters of air in it, whereas a high volume mask 
can have anywhere from 150 to 180 mils of air that you have to continuously fill up as you descend. And that air has to come from somewhere. The deeper you dive, the smaller your lungs get. The other thing I really wanted to mention is that if you do wear glasses, you can get prescription lenses for your mask. Not all companies make them, but I'm fairly sure that Apollo and Hollis masks will make prescription lenses. But I think the best thing to do would be just to get in touch with your local dive shop and see, see what they can source for you. If you are interested in having a look at some of the gear that I've just been talking about, I've included a link in the description to a really good dive shop. They have heaps of good stuff and they help me out by letting me record my videos in their shop. So would be great if you could support them because they are supporting you. All right, so now let's say you have your mask. There is another step that you need to go through. There is a factory film that is on the inside of the glass lenses of a mask and you need to either burn it off or rub it off. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna go for a dive and it's gonna fog up. So you can either take a little bit of toothpaste, ideally an abrasive toothpaste, and rub it vigorously into the inside of the lens. Leave it to dry and then wash it out. Or you can also take a lighter and simply burn the film out and you'll see it disappearing and burning before you. Now some people are a bit nervous to do that because they're worried they're going to burn the silicon but it just doesn't happen. You're not going to burn the silicon as long as you focus the flame onto the glass itself. My personal remedy to make sure a mask will never fog up is this. I get a mask and first I toothpaste both of the lenses. Then I wash it out, I leave it to dry and then I get a lighter and then after that I burn the each lens as well. And that should sort it out. But if on the odd chance that doesn't even work, which it should, just repeat the process until it does. All right, so that's almost it for masks. But before I quickly talk about snorkels, I wanna say that when you are wearing a mask, you need to adjust the strap so that the mask isn't too tight on your face. It needs to be relatively loose, though still tight enough to make a seal on your face. And when you take it off, there should be no impressions or indents in your skin. Okay, so snorkels for freediving is a very simple topic. Get a simple J snorkel. You don't need and you do not want a purge valve, and you don't need and you don't want a splash guard. These things are just not appropriate for what we're doing. The only thing you really need to be concerned about when choosing a snorkel is its flexibility. Do you want a hard snorkel or a more flexible one? Typically, the more flexible snorkels are the more expensive. And that's because when you're actually diving with them, they bend in the water and create less resistance and they don't annoy you so much by banging into your head. You can attach the snorkel to your mask in a number of different ways. There are different snorkel attachments that usually come with the snorkel. Or you can get these little snorkel bands that you can attach to your mask strap. But also, if you do have a flexible soft snorkel, you can just as easily stick it under your mask strap and usually it holds better and in a more comfortable position. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of this awesome freediving family that we're creating together. Thank you to the experienced divers that helped me out by taking the time to answer questions in the comments. If this video was helpful, make sure you help me out by leaving a like and sharing the video around so that your dive buddies can see it. I'll see you in the water somewhere. I'm Adam Stern. I hold my breath and dive really deep. Check out this video because I think you'll like it. Otherwise, this is the latest video I've posted on my channel.